Hello and welcome, Pastor John here, and uh, uh, I hope you are still enjoying the series and following along here. Today we are going to be looking at the book of Daniel, a passage from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. So please open your Bibles and turn to Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 to 10. Daniel, book of Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 to 10. All right, now here we read. I watched as thrones were put in place and the Ancient One sat down to judge. His clothing, clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire, and a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. Millions of, millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend him. Then the court began its sessions, and the books were opened. God bless you, the honest word. God is judge. God is judge. So a little bit of background here for this uh, passage. Uh, the prophet Daniel is an early exile in Babylon. And um, he's probably writing around 520 BC from Babylon. And um, this segment um, is, uh, takes place after God rescues him from the lion's den. When you read the book of uh, Daniel, I encourage you to, um, there's, there's so much going on. Um, uh, it, it, it can be or feel a little bit overwhelming at times, but break it up into chapters, um, you know, into segments. And yeah, we pro uh, you may have heard of Daniel in the lion's den and uh, how God rescues him from the lion's den. And that's the segment that precedes this passage here. So here, the eternal kingdom of God is introduced. All right, so we have here uh, Daniel's, um, God revealing himself to Daniel. And uh, the topic here for us is to understand that God is judge and will judge all people. And also understand, I will repeat that. So we want to understand that God is judge and will, will judge all people. And also that Jesus Christ is the judge. Jesus Christ is the judge. Okay. So in verse 9, the Ancient of Days refers to God himself. Okay. So um, that's sometimes when we think of, you know, God as like... Um, you know, an old man with a long beard, or white, and everything, and uh, that's not so far off, really. Um, but it's 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 more of a way of um, God expressing Himself, to, in a way that uh, the prophet Daniel can um, reveal God, uh, who God is and what He's up to, to um, to others, to the exiles, and on also to us. And so that's basically what it's all about. Um, the fire that's flowing out, fire is, um, is always the sense of judgment in the Bible, like an eternal fire or flame. There's, there, it's a form of judgment. And in verse 10, when it says represents all people, meaning that is everyone, all people, past, present, and future. Every, everybody was ever born, uh, is born now, ever will be born until judgment day. Um, is uh, that's what represents all people means in verse 10. So as we read on in Daniel, um, if you just continue on, chapter 7, 13 to 4, 14. Daniel chapter 7, 13 to 4, 14. We read, As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient One and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world, so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal, it will never end. His kingdom 
will never be destroyed. God bless reading of his word. So this vision points directly to Jesus Christ. So the Son of Man is alludes to, is an allusion uh, to Jesus Christ, and that is Jesus' appearance. So this is where it all comes together. Um, as we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 12 to 16, Revelation, if you want to read along, to open your Bible. I uh, hope you have it open already. Yeah, it's always good. Best to have the Bible open. Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. We read, When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands, and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white, white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. Amen. God bless you in his word. So, what does all of this mean for you and me? The fact um, that Christ is our judge and will judge us. It means that God is the sovereign ruler and judge of all. Sovereign and the ruler and judge of all. There are, there are unfortunately people who deny Jesus as God in the flesh, and that's unfortunate. That's what we pray for people who do that, that they repent, turn to Christ. Well, there's still time. The Holy Spirit leads them to Christ. Um, but regardless of people deny Jesus as God of the flesh, God is the sovereign ruler and the judge of all. As we read in Proverbs 16, verse 4, The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. God bless you on this word. I read it again. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. So we understand here that God will judge all people, believer and unbeliever. Believer and unbeliever. So Jesus tells us in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, 36. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. God bless you his word. So that's something we want to take seriously, and <coughs> it's not symbolic, or maybe so, but it's a, it's a, it expresses the reality of uh, heaven and hell, and Jesus uh, helps us understand um, a bit more about this. Also, we understand that God is just, right? So God is just. In other words, he cannot do um, anything beyond his own sovereign justice. So it's important to understand that for people, I mean, somebody may say, oh, I'm a good person, that means I'm going to go to heaven, or I belong to this group of people, and that's why I'm going to go to heaven, or uh, God doesn't even exist, so, uh, you know, I'm going to go to you know, wherever, uh, that's false. The Bible reveals to us uh, that there's no second opportunity to repent. In other words, there is no, you know, no, at that time, on Judgment Day, when Judgment Day, day arrives, there is no second opportunity to, to, to repent. So that's it. So that what happens then is, that that's why we're called to turn to Jesus now, at this moment while there's still time. Right? And I pray that, that you do, right? Um, because uh, uh, since there is no second opportunity to repent, judgment day comes, Jesus returns, that's it, right? Or before that happens, we die. As believers, absent, with the, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But uh, for unbelievers, um, uh, there's the eternal separation from God because of God's justice and, ho and holiness. Uh, also, no, we can also call it hell. 
So hell is a reality as is heaven. So in Revelation 20, to, please turn to Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. We read. That's Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was, whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. God bless the reading of his word. So this is a very stern and firm admonishment um, that we are, um, um, as we're placed as believers uh, at the white, white throne judgment, the final judgment, um, we, we can be sure that our names are uh, written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Christ's uh, Book of Life. We call it the Lamb's Book of Life. So something to consider, and we saw that that's how it all fits together. Uh, uh, going back to the prophet um, Daniel, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Judge, Jesus is our Lord and our Judge. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.